Hey everyone, my name is Samara. I'm a museum ambassador at the ASU Art Museum and typically on a normal Saturday I would be able to introduce you to our artist workshop behind our front desk and we'd all sit down and have a great story time but for today we're going to do that from the comfort of our own home and we'll be reading Family Pictures by Sandra Cisneros and Carmen Lomas Garza. So yeah, so go ahead, grab a cozy blanket and get ready for a good story. So, family pictures. Introduction. They say every picture tells a story, but the pictures of Carmen Lomas Garza tell many, many stories. And this is a lucky thing, especially if you like to look and take your time. Do you also have a calendar on your kitchen wall? Why does grandmother take off her shoes when she sits on the porch swing? Maybe you remember a bedspread with little tuffets that left your face with dots every time you took a nap. It's as if it's our turn to hit the piñata. I am certain the room of the sick woman smells sad like cough syrup. At any moment, someone is going to yell from the kitchen. Get in here and help with these tamales. I don't know about you, but my feet hurt from waiting for the birthday girl to finally step out of the car and join the quinceanera party. The top of my head is hot from walking all day at the fair with my father because I'm my father's favorite, did I tell you? It's as if we're pressing our face against the window screens and peeking inside our house. These are family pictures, and it doesn't matter if your family is from Kingsville or Cairo, Sarajevo or Katamun, they are your family's pictures too. Tell me, which one is you? The fair in Reynosa. My friends and I once went to a very big fair across the border in Reynosa, Mexico. The fair lasted a whole week. Artisans and entertainers came from all over Mexico. There were lots of booths with food and crafts. This is one little section where everybody is ordering and eating tacos. I painted a father buying tacos and the rest of the family sitting down at the table. The little girl is the father's favorite, and that's why she gets to tag along with him. I can always recognize little girls who are their father's favorite. oranges. We were always going to my grandparents' house, so whatever they were involved in, we would get involved in too. In this picture, my grandmother is hanging up the laundry. We told her that the oranges needed picking, so she said, we'll go ahead and pick some. Before she knew it, she had too many oranges to hold in her hands, so she made a basket out of her apron. That's my brother up in the tree, picking oranges. The rest of us are picking up the ones that he dropped on the ground. for dinner. This is my grandparents' backyard. My grandmother is killing a chicken for dinner. My grandfather is in the chicken coop, trying to catch another chicken. Later, my family will sit down to eat Sunday dinner, chicken soup. That's me in the blue dress with my younger brother, Arturo. He was so surprised by the scene that he started to drop his snow cone. We had never seen anything like that before. I knew my grandparents had always raised chickens, but I never knew how the chickens got to be soup. My grandfather, the grandmother, and then Arturo and his sister. Birthday party. That's me, hitting the piñata at my sixth birthday party. It was also my brother Arturo's fourth birthday. My mother threw a big birthday party for us and invited all kinds of friends, cousins, and neighborhood kids. You can't see the piñata when you're trying to hit it because your eyes are covered with a handkerchief. Here, my father is pulling the rope that makes the piñata go up and down. He will make sure that everybody has a chance to hit it at least once. 
somebody will end up breaking it, and that's when all the candies will fall out and all the kids will run and try to grab them. Cakewalk. <clears throat> Cakewalk was a game to raise money to send to Mexican Americans to the university. You paid 25 cents to stand in a number. When the music started, you walked around and around. When the music stopped, whatever number you happened to step on was your number. Then one of the ladies in the center would pick out a number from a can, and if you were standing on the winning number, you would win a cake. That's my mother in the center of the circle in the pink and black dress. My father is serving punch. I'm the little girl in the front of the store scribbling on the sidewalk with a twig. Picking nopale cactus. In the early spring, my grandfather would come and get us, and we'd all go into the woods to pick nopal cactus. Here, my grandfather and my mother are slicing off the fresh, tender pads of the nopal and putting them in boxes. My grandmother and my brother Arturo are pulling leaves from the mesquite tree to line the boxes. After we get home, my grandfather would cut off all the needles from each cactus pad. Then my grandmother would parboil the nopalitos in hot water. The next morning, she would cut them up and stir fry them with chili powder and eggs for breakfast. That is one of my favorite breakfasts. Nopales with huevo. It's so delicious. Hammered head shark. This picture is about the times my family went to Padre Island in the Gulf of Mexico to go swimming. Once we got there, a fisherman had just caught a big hammer shark at the end of the pier. How he got the shark to the beach, I never found out. It was scary to see because it was big enough to swallow a little kid whole. Rabbit. My grandfather used to have a garden and also raised chickens and rabbits. In this painting, he is coming into the kitchen with a freshly prepared rabbit for dinner. My grandmother is making tortillas. That's my little brother Arturo sitting on the bench. He liked to watch my grandmother cook. And that's my bench. And that's my younger sister Margie playing jacks on the floor. I'm watching from my grandparents' bedroom, which is next to the kitchen. Mary and Joseph seeking shelter at the inn. On each of the nine nights before Christmas, we act out the story of Mary and Joseph seeking shelter at the inn. We call this costumes las posadas. A little girl and a little boy play Mary and Joseph, and they are led by an angel. Each night, the travelers go to a different house. They knock on the door. When the door opens, they sing, we are Mary and Joseph looking for a shelter. At first, the family inside refuses to let them in. Then the travelers sing again. At last, Joseph and Mary are led in the house. Then everybody comes in and we have a party. Making tamales. This is a scene from my parents' kitchen. Everybody is making tamales. My grandfather is wearing blue overalls and a blue shirt. I'm right next to him with my sister Margie. We're helping to soak the dried leaves from the corn. My mother is spreading the cornmeal dough on the leaves and my aunt and uncle are spreading meat on the dough. My grandmother is lining up the rolled and folded tamales ready for cooking. 
In some families, just the women make the tamales, but in our family, everybody helps. Watermelon. It was a hot summer evening. The whole family was on the front porch. My grandfather had brought us some watermelons that afternoon. We put them in the refrigerator and let them chill down. After supper, we went out to the front porch. My father caught the watermelon and gave each one of us a slice. It was fun to sit out there. The light was so bright on the porch that you couldn't see beyond the, light, the edge of the lit area. It was like being in our own little world. Quinceañera. Many years ago, as I passed by the church, I happened to see a quinceañera celebration. A girl was celebrating her 15th birthday. She made a grand entrance in a lowrider car that pulled up very slowly. She really took her time fixing her hair while all of her 14 attendants and their escorts waited to enter the church for a special mass. I was amazed that the girl's dresses were hot pink instead of the usual pale, pale colors worn for a quinceañera. I didn't have a quinceañera, even though my parents offered to give me one. It's very expensive to throw such a big party, and I didn't want them to go into debt. But I put myself in this painting as one of the people watching. I'm the little girl with the red skirt at the top of the steps. Healer. This is a scene at a neighbor's house. The lady in bed was very sick with the flu. She had already been to a regular doctor and had cut in prescription drugs for her chest cold. But she had also asked a healer, a curadora, to do a final cleansing or healing for this flu. The curandera came over and did the cleansing using branches from the root plant. She also burned copal incense in a coffee can at the front of the bed. Curanderas know a lot about healing. They are very highly respected. Beds for dreaming. My sister and I used to go up on the roof on summer nights and just stay there and talk about the stars and the constellations. We also talked about the future. From the time I was 13, I knew I wanted to be an artist. And all those things that I dreamed of doing as an artist, I'm finally doing now. My mother was the one who inspired me to be an artist. She made up our beds to sleep in and have regular dreams, but she also laid out the bed for our dreams of the future. Well, happy you guys enjoyed this book. It's probably one of my favorites that we've read. Why don't you share your favorite part of the story down in the comments? But thanks so much for tuning in for another Storytime Saturday. Really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.